community testing is essentially our mechanism for getting feedback, not only from other community members who want to test things like micropayments on the mainnet, but developers who actually want to take our SDK and start building their own applications on a testnet. Welcome to Hedera Hashgraphs, gossip about gossip. I'm Daniel Francis. I'm Ken Anderson. And I'm Paul Madsen. If you are a developer, an entrepreneur, crypto enthusiast, or just trying to learn more about how distributed ledger technology and Hedera Hashgraph will impact your industry, then you'll love the episodes that we have coming up. Bookmark us, add us to your podcast app, and stay tuned. Hey there, I'm Paul Madsen. Welcome to Hedera Hashgraph Gossip About Gossip. Today is Monday, May 13th, which is the day Hedera opens up phase two of our community testing program, which is why I'm joined today by two of my Hedera colleagues who are best able to talk about CTP2, which is what the cool kids say in describing it, Donald Tebow and Brady Gentile. Guys, welcome. Thanks, Paul. Excited to talk about community testing. Yeah. So what are we trying to do? What's the purpose? Yeah. So from a development perspective, we treat three traits as kind of our primary tenants as we're developing any of our technology. Those are security, scalability, and performance. And so to continuously improve all the parts of our stack on those three measures, we want to make sure that we're continuously doing testing internally, but also externally. So community testing is essentially our mechanism for getting feedback, not only from other community members who want to test things like micropayments on the mainnet, but developers who actually want to take our SDK and start building their own applications on a testnet. So community testing is, you know, our opening of the doors, so to speak, and we get a tremendous amount of feedback. It's a bit stressful, as you can imagine, as a product manager, getting that feedback and having to improve. But ultimately, we think it helps to stabilize and improve our technology. So you said opening the door, but it's not the first time we've opened the door, right? This is phase two. So what is new relative to phase one? Yeah, exactly. So the biggest difference I would say is really in the developer experience. So not only have we made improvements to our SDK to make it easier to use the three core services of Hedera, cryptocurrency, smart contract, and file service, but we've improved the experience for onboarding to testnet. So it now can be done in the click of a button. We've released a new documentation page that walks a developer through their hello world of blockchain. And we've also improved things like our micropayments demo application using the daily timestamp website. So hopefully everybody will kind of experience some of the improvements we made based off of the first community testing and this second one. What's that distinction you made between mainnet and testnet? Yeah, that's a great question. So you can think of mainnet as the place where it all happens, where the live HBAR is transferred between accounts, where we expect production applications and solutions to actually be built and connected, and where the lion's share of our users are actually testing things like micropayments today. These are also where the council members and other organizations will operate the nodes long term. The test nets are where people test. It's how they start to build their initial application and really learn about some of the fundamentals of of Hashgraph. So how do, how do people sign up for this phase of testing? If they signed up for the first phase, do they need to do it again? Yeah, so if they've signed up for the first phase, the thing that they have to do is just update their wallet application on iOS or Android, as well as the browser extension on Google Chrome, and they, they should be good to go. If they haven't completed community testing program phase one, they can get registered by going to portal.hedera.com and signing up for a Hedera portal profile there. After they've signed up, they'll get instructions to walk through community testing from both a consumer perspective as well as a a developer perspective. What happens in that sign-up process? Yeah, so as part of the sign-up process, you're going to go through what's called initially a KYC. We've teamed up with our KYC provider, NetKey. As a way to go through this process, you download an application and fill out some information to verify your identity. And then from then you go and choose a network to join. So if you're going to be going through the consumer path, you'll join the mainnet on Hedera. And from there, after joining the mainnet, you'll get the wallet and create an account on the Hedera public distributed ledger. And then you'll get a browser extension, as mentioned before. And that browser extension allows you to perform micropayments on a blog website. 
that we've set up called Daily Time Stamp. And in sending micropayments, you will be transacting on our main network and helping us test things out. And then we'll reward you essentially and allow you to earn cryptocurrency for doing so. Okay, cool. So you said KYC, but why are we KYCing this step? Sure, I can take this one. So one of the things that we're, we're doing throughout this program is, as I mentioned, really testing our technology. And because people are testing our technology, calling APIs, finding bugs, helping us improve the technology, they have the opportunity to earn HBAR, our cryptocurrency, in return. And so it's important to us that, especially in this early phase, we know who we're distributing to and know that those people who've earned the HBAR are known and trusted, so to speak. And so it's important to us to conduct that KYC process. Okay, fair enough. So how do people earn? What are the different options for earning some HBARs? Sure. So the two big fields are either testing micropayments on the mainnet or testing an application or building an application on the testnet. So for instance, a user who reads an article using the Chrome extension on the daily timestamp and pays for that article will actually earn about five HBAR in return for that reading of the article. And the reason that helps us is because every time somebody clicks on an article, they submit a micropayment, and we've been getting an incredible amount of helpful information about load balancing, testing, and optimization on the network. And that's just one example. Others include testnet transactions or creating mainnet accounts themselves. Okay, so they pay HBARs to read the article, but then we effectively compensate them for, for doing so. Yeah, exactly. They earn it by helping, you know, to test with every one of those actions, our our network. Okay, great. So you mentioned micropayments, but we tested micropayments in phase one. Are we testing anything additional in in phase two? What's next? Yeah, good question. So so in phase two, we're actually also going to include the ability to earn some additional HBARs by testing Hedera's smart contract functionality on the mainnet. And so we've been engaging with community members in regards to building example applications. And in this case, we engaged with a gentleman named Nick, who's also the creator of hashhash.info, which is a graph explorer for Hedera Hashgraph. And we're going to be adding the ability for testers to use the Hedera browser extension, the same one you would use for micropayments, to actually be able to purchase a star using HBARs on this star map application. And So once a smart contract is called in order to make an exchange of HBARs for a star, the tester is going to be rewarded for doing so. And at the same time, helping Hedera understand being able to execute smart contracts on our mainnet. That's cool. I know from my science background, stars are non-fungible, so that'll be fun (laughs) to play with. So the mainnet, is is this mainnet that which will actually go live with in OA? Or are there any notable differences? Sure. I'm happy to talk to this one. So this is the live mainnet we launched in August of last year. And by live, we mean that the HBAR that are distributed, traded, sent, or used on that mainnet to date are real HBAR and and will continue to be going forward. There are some differences between the network as it stands today and as it will at Open Access. Most notably, because we're still testing the technology, it has some different properties like being throttled to improve the stability of the network as we test it, and we plan to ease that throttle over time. And it's also operated primarily by nodes operated by Hedera and Swirls. And again, as as I'm sure we've talked about on other episodes, as the council members join, we'll start to have those nodes be stood up and operated themselves. So it'll move from being operated by, by us and our team to actually be operated by a decentralized group of organizations before, of course, becoming public long-term in node operation. Yeah, that path Lehman described in uh, last week's webinar. Exactly. It, it gets back to you know those design tenants I mentioned at the start of stability, security, and performance as really what we're focusing on building over, over the long term. Great. So how long will CTP2 last? We actually don't know yet. You know, we want to make sure that we engage as broad a subset of the community. Um, We're targeting about 100,000 accounts on the mainnet, so we could get that in a number of days or weeks. It could run up until open access. We do plan, regardless of when we hit that number of accounts, to actually continuously expose new opportunities to test. So Brady mentioned smart contracts. 
We expect other potential developer tools, applications to be available to the community to continuously be engaged and help us improve as we march towards open access. Okay, great. That sounds awesome, guys. Uh, You've motivated me to go uh, update my Chrome extension and read some more articles on Daily Timestamp. Thanks very much for joining today. Thanks, Paul. Thank you for listening to Hedera Hashgraph's Gossip About Gossip. If you liked the episode, please subscribe, rate, and review, and also share and tell your friends. Or connect with us on social media like Twitter, Instagram, etc. at Hashgraph, particularly if you want to leave us feedback on the podcast. We look forward to hearing from you.